In the last video, Carlo Alberto, the king of Piedmont Sardinia, took advantage of the many revolts in the Austrian Empire, to declare a war against it, in order to conquer the Lombardy and Venice regions. Radetzky, the Austrian general in command, is on the run. Will Carlo Alberto be able to achieve his goals? On the 25th of March, Carlo Alberto's vanguard slowly crossed the river Ticino. However, the whole army will take five days to cross it. In the meantime, Radetzky has already crossed the river Ayo and was headed towards Verona. On the 2nd of April, Radetzky and his army entered Verona. That day Carlo Alberto was in Cremona, about 100 kilometers away. So what now? Can we advance or not? I don't know. Come on. The newspapers are pushing and everyone is coming to help. The people from Naples, the army from the Pope, we should move. Fine. But slowly. On the 6th of April, Carlo Alberto crossed the river Ayo. I'm scared Mario. We are in enemy's territory. I have to check the map. Give me the map. Sire, we don't have a map. What did you say? In Turin, we prepared the map of Lombardy, but not the one of Veneto. No one has a map of what is from the river Ayo onwards. Okay fine, then just send some light cavalry to scout. Sire, we don't have any light cavalry, only heavy choir's ears. In front of them, they had the Austrian Empire which had the best light cavalry in the world, the Hungarian Hussars, and the Polish Lancers. Everyone was scared that the Austrian could suddenly attack from everywhere at any moment. On the 11th of April, they arrived at the river Mincho which was defended by the Austrians. Hey, we're coming to fight you. It wasn't a real battle. Carlo Alberto's army fired guns and the Austrians went away. There were zero casualties. That's right. Go away. The Italians are coming. Sire, we took control of the bridges. Shall we cross the Mincho? No, let's stay on this side. So what are we going to do then? Maybe we can ask if a city ahead of us can start a revolt. And so it was. The city of Mondova started a revolt to be liberated. Exactly like Milan, people went down on the streets to protest. However, this time the bishop of Mondova said to everyone, Brother and sisters, there's no need for violence, it's against our beloved religion. Oh, okay, let's go home. Are you kidding me? They were about to start the revolt and the bishop stopped them. So what about now then? Let's siege the small city of Peschiera. Carlo Alberto was still stuck in the old ways of doing a war, which was by sieging the enemy's fortresses. Napoleon taught the world that wars have to be won on the battlefields, by looking for the enemy and defeating it. Bring the heavy siege weapons. Sire, they are still in Piedmont. What the hell? Fine, I can wait. Carlo Alberto thought he had time, but he was wrong. In Gorizia, another Austrian general, Laval Nugent, gathered many small troops from the other cities plus some from Croatia, and he's marching towards Radetzky to give support. On the 17th of April, Nugent crossed the river Isonso and on the 22nd reconquered Udine. In the meantime, Carlo Alberto is still waiting for the siege weapons. Sire, while we're waiting, shall we go to Verona and see how things are there? Does that mean we have to cross the river RDJ? Yes sir. Okay, but slowly. Sure, as always. In order to cross the river RDJ, there was a bridge, in Postrengo that was quite well defended by the Austrians because it was an important communication line between Verona and the rest of the Austrian Empire. Carlo Alberto decided to attack the Austrians in Postrengo. 16,000 Italian troops won against 8,000 Austrians. Carlo Alberto's army lost 0.7% of the soldiers involved, while the Austrians lost 5% of the troops involved in the battle. At the time of Napoleon, it was normal for an army to lose even 25% of the soldiers involved. If the Italians lost 0.7% of their troops and the Austrians 5%, it means that the battle was conducted extremely carefully by both parties. Sire, I have good news. Exactly what I need. Tell me. The cannons have arrived. We can start the siege of Peschiera. Beautiful. The Papal States Army arrived as well. They are following the orders of the General Durando. Durando with a small army arrived at the River Po from the south. He had two divisions a regular division from the Papal States, and another division of volunteers from Rome. Finally, we arrived. Now we can help our Italian friends. General, a letter from the Pope arrived. The Cardinals told him we should not attack another Catholic country. 
He said we have to retreat. You must be kidding me. I don't care. We go anyway. Durando decided to disobey the order from Pope Pio IX. He crossed the river Po and entered the Veneto. However, his army was too slow. And he couldn't encounter Nugent who was going to Verona with his army to support Radetsky. On the 25th of May, Nugent arrived in Verona. Carlo Alberto is still stuck sieging Peschiera. Radetsky is not as good as Napoleon, but he knows how to do a war. As soon as he receives Nugent's army he decides to attack. The Italian army was deployed on a front line that was too long. 70 kilometers between Pastrengo and Montova, in an era where there was no radio. Radetsky decides to attack from the south, towards Montova. In front of Montova, the area was defended by a division from Tuscany, two battalions from Naples, and one battalion of students from Pisa. All of them were under the command of General Cesare de Lauger from Tuscany. Radetsky won, and the Tuscany army was defeated. I told you the day before the attack that the Austrians were coming, you did nothing. You just told me the Austrians were coming, I thought you were sending help. The army made of students, defeated, ran to Brescia, and never left the city. Now that Radetsky broke one of the Italian flanks, he can attack the Piedmontese army from the back. Carlo Alberto regrouped the rest of the army and went down to fight him. In a location called Goito, the two armies collided. It was a confusing battle where no one from both sides really understood what was going on. After an entire afternoon of fighting, Radetsky decided to retreat. The Piedmontese army lost 45 soldiers, and the Italian propaganda claimed that the Austrians lost 5,000 soldiers, while in reality, the Austrians lost 68 men. Radetsky lost the battle. It's with great sadness to say that I have to leave. Ok, bye. Sire, another revolt started in Vienna, the Austrians are weak, shall we attack them? No, let's wait. I have to think. While Carlo Alberto was thinking about what to do, Radetsky marched with his army towards Vicenza, in order to fight against Durando, and his Papal States army. Durando arrived in Vicenza and sent a letter to Carlo Alberto. Sire, I guarantee that I will hold Vicenza for at least 8 days. In the meantime, you can attack Radetsky's army from behind. Great. I have plenty of time to think. We will fight for Italy until our last breath. On the first day of the war, Radetsky defeated Durando's army who immediately surrendered. For one month, nothing really happened. Radetsky was waiting for reinforcements from Austria, while Carlo Alberto didn't know what to do. The King of Naples realized that and decided to withdraw the regiments he sent. Carlo, what's your plan now? Friend, I'm still thinking. Sire, a letter from the King of Naples. Are you going to attack? Still thinking. Carlo. My friend, you know that I'm st Wait, where are they going? <laughs> in the meantime, in Milan, the provisional government. The Pope's army got defeated. The army from Tuscany got annihilated, the King of Naples withdrew his troops. Carlo Alberto is fighting alone. We have to help him. Okay, fine, let's recruit volunteers. However, the spirit in Milan changed, and there were not many volunteers. My dear friends, we are united here today because of our common goal. We want Italy. We want freedom. And so we will fight our enemies. Maybe they didn't hear. Say it again. We will fight our enemies. That's weird. Try to ask them a question. Who in here wants a pizza? Who wants to fight? There are such a few volunteers, but, we are a government. We can force the soldiers to come back, and fight for us. It was decided to recall the Milanese official army, which was made of Italian soldiers, but they were fighting for Austria just a few months earlier. But there was a problem. We don't have uniforms, and the Austrians said they are going to kill anyone who fights without one. So, what now? What are we going to do? Wait a minute. I have an idea. Why we don't wear this? The Austrian uniform? I have the same one. Problem solved. So, they decided to send some reinforcements to Carlo Alberto, dressed up like Austrian soldiers, and some others with no uniform at all. Carlo Cataneo will write in his diary. Our soldiers were dressed in canvas vests. Some with a beret, some with a felt or straw hat, of any style. Shapeless regiments, which seemed to take their salary from the poorest country in the world. However, on the 4th of July, 
Carlo Alberto had the lucky break of his life. The best general in Italy, Giuseppe Garibaldi, has just arrived from South America. He wants to help Carlo Alberto. Aren't we the luckiest people alive? The General Garibaldi is willing to fight with us. You mean Garibaldi, the one who has great knowledge of warfare? Yes. The one who fought many battles in South America? Yes. He who earned the title one of the best generals in the world is coming to help us? Yes. And truth be told, Carlo refused the help from Garibaldi. Carlo Alberto writes a letter to the Ministry of the War. Today, I granted an audience to the famous General Garibaldi. The self-styled general's track record, especially his Republican proclamation, makes it absolutely impossible for us to accept them into the army. A subsidy could rather be given, as long as they get out of the way. So General Garibaldi was immediately dismissed, while the army was still stretched in a 70 kilometers line. From Pestrengo to Montova, from the River Mincho to the River Po. Nothing is working, the supply lines are not working and the soldiers are dying of hunger. It is also extremely hot and the uniforms have a heavy texture. Many died of syncope under the sun. Radetsky received another batch of reinforcements and decided to attack in the north, defeating the Italian army. He decided to march straight, towards the west, but Carlo Alberto attacked him from the south. The battle took place in a location called Costosa. After a few days of fighting, Carlo Alberto decided that he lost, and withdrew his troops, but in reality, he lost 2% of his army, while the Austrian lost 5%. After the victory, Radetzky decided to place his army on the roads used by the Italian army to communicate with the rest of Italy. So no news or reinforcements are allowed to pass. Stop. What do you have? Pizza. Not allowed. Stop. And you, what did you bring? Letters from mums. Not allowed. Next. What do you have? Pineapple pizza. <laughs> That's not allowed. So on the 27th of July, Carlo Alberto asked for an armistice. Are these Italians serious? Just after one battle, they decided to surrender? Radetzky is so surprised that the Italians decided to surrender, after just losing 2% of their troops, that proposes to them to keep the city of Milan, and its surroundings. Sire, this is a great offer. We can keep the whole Lombardy. Shall we accept it? You mean, we can stop fighting, go home, relax, be with our family and still be able to keep Milan? Um, no. This is an insult to me. The war continues. Even if the war continues, the Italians kept running back toward Milan. In two days they crossed the river Mincho and the river Oyo. They hoped to resist on the river Ada, but the Austrians defeated them even there. Sire, we lost everything, shall we just go back to Piedmont? Never. I will defend Milan. It's an extremely hot summer. On the night of the 2nd of August, there was a storm of hail that killed men and horses. On the 3rd of August, the Italian soldiers reached the city of Milan, without anything to eat and the citizens now have lost hope of getting liberated. Radetzky attacks Milan and after just one day of battling, Carlo Alberto surrendered. Fine, you won. And Milan is back to me. On the 9th of August, they signed the Armistice of Salasco. The war lasted for four months and a half. The news of Radetzky's victory arrived in Vienna, and the great composer Johann Strauss wrote the Radetzky March, which is still played today, every year for the New Year's celebrations in Vienna.